Today we're going to be talking LSP, Language Server Protocol. What is it, how to configure it in NeoVim, and the basics of what's going on outside of NeoVim as well. And before we get started, um, we really need to actually learn a little bit more about what's going on with LSP. I know, I know, I know. Uh, learning the thing is very out of style in 2024, but unfortunately... <laughs> What can, what can I do? I'm a 30 year old dad with three kids out of styles, literally my middle name. Okay. That's, that's the best that I've got going for me. All right. So we're going to learn a little bit about what it is and then copy and paste some code. Okay. All right. So we'll, I'll meet you in the middle. All right, chat. So here we go. Basic idea for LSP. It's a way, a common language for editors and an external program to talk to each other, to give information about the state of the editor and the state of your code. Okay, so basically LSP says, hey, uh, editor, you can send information about the changes that are happening and what files are open and how they've changed and where the cursor is and all this kind of stuff. And then the language server sends back information like, hey, you have an error here or the editor can ask, hey, where, what's the definition of the thing under my cursor? And then the language server will send back to it and say, oh, it's in this file at this location. That's sort of the basic, very, very basic, overly simplified idea of what's going on there. Okay, and uh, those external programs, they're just like running somewhere on your computer, right? And the editor is often called the client because it's the one talking to the server, right? So client server, that's kind of the idea of what's going on here. And NeoVim has this client built in. We can do something like, my key, my keys weren't inside of here, uh, luavim.lsp, and we can see that there's like a ton of functions inside of here that we can use, right? And we can do help vim.lsp and we can see a ton of functions inside of uh inside of here as well especially if we're looking inside this spot right so there's like a lot of stuff built into neovim and it's really cool and i think it's designed really well and i'm not just saying that because i spent a lot of work on it lots of people much uh, smarter and better spent a lot of time thinking even harder about it okay so it's it's really nice but here's the thing you need to run those external servers so you, you got to actually like tell neovim where those servers are when to start them and any additional configuration that might need to be passed to them. And that's where NVIM LSP config comes in. Okay. This is basically like it says a data only repo. So it just provides a bunch of useful defaults to help you uh, configure and interact with the servers. All right. So uh, what we want to do is I want to get Lua LSP working so that we don't have such a scuffed experience where if we like leave an error, we don't find it out until much later. Okay. So uh, the way that I usually do this is I do something like help LSP config dash all. We don't have that installed yet we have to actually install it right so we go to here we make a new uh, lsp.lua okay awesome we're gonna go inside of here and write ourselves a nice little return like this and go um we'll grab this here like this and we'll give ourselves a little config like that and now here's where we need to start doing things it says hey uh, the way that you do this is do require LSP config, the name of your server and setup. So the way I normally do this is after I write this, which we don't have anything right here that we can actually do. We have to restart NeoVim here so that it actually installs this. What did I forget already? I forgot a, bra a bracket here. That's why it would be nice to have an LSP, wouldn't it? Okay, so now we would install that. So when we go back to here, we can do something now like help LSP can or help LSP config dash all. And then I would just search for like Lua and it says, oh, Lua LS. So I say, okay, well, let's find Lua LS, right? And it says, okay, here's the language server. Here's how you install it. You can just uh, go to this spot. Um, I've already done this here. Pretty easy ways are like installing it with your package manager. I built it from the latest release. And in that case, you just need to make sure basically that you like link the downloaded bin to somewhere on your computer, right? So that you can actually access it in your path. And you can double check that by running it and checking it here. You can also check something like echo executable of the name of that. And if it returns a one inside of NeoVim, that means NeoVim can find it. That's very important. If NeoVim can't find it, then it's not going to be able to run it. Okay. And so then after that, it's got some info here, but uh, the basics of how you would do this. So we're not going to do the rest of this exactly. We'll just start with require um, LS, uh, LSP config dot lua ls because that was the name that we found setup okay and so we'll save this and we'll go ahead and open this back up and when we uh open now like rnit lua 
the Lua language server is going to start, and then it's probably going to start yelling at us because it says, dude, you're using global variables I don't know about. Right. Okay. That makes sense. It doesn't know how to find them yet. All right. So you get this right away out of the box, no configuration necessary, right? It starts showing uh, diagnostics from the LSP. But you say, okay, I'd really like for it to know about that. So let's go ahead and tell it a little bit how to do this, right? And in this case, um, I'm going to use Folkcase lazy dev uh, dot nvim plugin, which basically just sets this up for you so that you don't have to know too many things about it. And so in this case, we can just uh, copy this here. We'll go back to our LSP and I'll add this as a dependencies like this. Um, and then we need to also make sure that we have a comma there, uh, which is good. And then once we have this, that's all, that's it. It just says, okay, once you do that and you're all set, ready to go, no problemo, uh, install the plugin, start editing your files. Sweet. Okay. So when we do that, we can open up NeoVim again. We go inside of here. And then now if we do Vim dot, we're going to start seeing something here. If we do control X, control O for Omni completion, we have our Vim globals. We have our Vim globals. Okay. We have our Vim globals. We don't have anything else installed yet. Okay. If you don't know about Omni completion, you should just read help ins completion. This is such a banger chapter. Okay. If you haven't read this, you're missing out. There's a bunch of great stuff. This is the one right here that you really need to know about. But anyways, so now we've got some, we've got some autocomplete going. We have a few other features going here. Let's say we do something like local X is five. Okay. And then we want to do print X, whoops, print X like this. Okay. We can actually go to definition of this thing by doing control right bracket. That's for go to tag. And we can jump back with control T that's automatic. We can do GRR for re uh, for references. That's sort of like go to uh, references, or you can do GRN for rename. And we could say very cool, right? And, and that'll work. We can even do um, if true then end and say local very cool is false print very cool just to show that these two things are not the same grn and we can say super cool and it doesn't change this one right because those aren't the same variable even though they have the same name they're in different scopes so they're not the same right so that's doing not just like text replace or something like that and you're thinking tj what we wrote that one line that's all that happened how could we figure this out boom it's in the help, of course, in case you haven't figured it out. It's one of my favorite things. You can just read through this help. And the main thing is it shows you a little bit how you could do this without NVIM LSP config. Really not too hard. Super reasonable to do. Um, but the main thing is it sets up Vim.diagnostic, sets up Omnifunk. That's the control X, control O. It sets up tag funk, so we can do control right bracket. It sets up format expression. So now if we do something like equals G, it's going to format the file for us, which is awesome. Uh, and then if, uh, if, oh, I didn't even show this one yet, right? Capital K shows you a beautiful hover. Look at this. Look at how nice that is. Look at how nice it is. It tells you about the function, its parameters, all this other stuff. That's great. That's sort of like hovering your mouse, except we don't need to hover our mouse. We have a cursor and we can just keep our hands on the keyboard, right? So, so there's like a bunch of really good <clears throat> stuff inside of here already set up. And here's the rename one code actions, references, implementations, document symbols, and even signature help, which is very cool. So all of those are just like, they're just there automatically all set up. So we set it up in basically like no lines at all, and it's working great. So that's basically everything that we, I wanted to go over for this first one. I'll start showing some stuff about completion and auto formatting in the next video, but I wanted to keep this one a little shorter and sweeter to just show, Hey, you can get almost all the way there, right? With, with just like this, right? And, and this code here is just to tell NeoVim about more Lua things, right? So it's really like almost no code at all to get set up. As long as you're willing to just read a little bit of the help and use those key maps. If you don't want to do that, we'll talk more about how you could change some of them next time or add some custom ones. Anyways, um, the last thing for today is uh, I need to give a shout out to my boy, Will King. If you don't know Will King, you should be following him on x.com. Yes, this is a sponsored ad read from my friend. Uh, and if you don't know who he is, he's the coach for our terminal.shop team. And check out this guy right here. Oh, he's about to get a sick board. Oh, look at him grab that board. 
am i right am i right I, we probably got some some nice uh some pictures of him at the beginning maybe or at the end i don't know he was in a really sick looking suit as well and um he has a little thing he wants all of you to know about are you interested in thirst traps are you interested in wholesome family fun are you wondering will will survive or not Tune in to find out he's building a shed in his backyard and you can watch his YouTube videos. So anyways, that's my friend, Will. He paid for that ad read. <laughs> what a goof. Okay. Anyways, that's it. That's it for the video. I hope you all enjoy this and we'll be back tomorrow with some more for Advent of Neovim. Bye-bye.